Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. All right, this, this is kind of going to be a sad episode, guys, but I, I feel like I, I I need to talk about it. This guitar we're unboxing today may be a little bit sentimental in a roundabout way. So about a month ago, I lost my stepfather through terrible, unjust, unnatural means. And while he might not have been my actual father, he was definitely the main father figure in my life. I'm not even sure if I would have ever gotten into instruments if it wasn't for him. But he's a great motivating factor for all things instrumental. You might have even gotten a comment or two from him from time to time on the show. But I think he was born in Scotland. But I think it was just easier to tell us kids that he was mainly from England, like he was a uh, part of a big band over there. So I always associated him with England. So when I bought one of these a couple of months ago, I, I thought I'd show it to him. I, I didn't know if you'd appreciate it or not, because I don't know how much he was in love with like the English flag and whatnot, but the Union Jack Explorer. So we had just recently documented one of those. He got to see that and he did like the guitar. So when this one showed up, it was actually offered to me by a viewer of the show. They had reached out and said, hey, you want another one of these Union Jack Explorers? But for whatever reason, there's been so many of these things showing up. Like not a lot. I mean, we're talking like three or four maybe, but they all show up at guitar shows. So maybe people saw my video and they're like, hey, maybe now's a good time to sell ours. Now, normally, I'm not really into the whole trim systems and Kalers and whatnot. But this is actually the Gibson Schaller version of the trim. It was a weird, shortly lived, like maybe six months to a year type thing. That is actually stock and factory. So due to his recent passing, we're actually getting the old uh, Christmas band together that I haven't played in in about 14 years, but... I thought it'd be fun for both guitarists to have the Union Jack Explorer as kind of like an interesting tribute. He mainly specialized in brass, but I just always knew him as a piano player over here. And I I'm not looking for sympathy comments here. Honestly, I would rather you just say, great show today, Trogly, and, and I'll, I'll know what you mean. But if you need to learn more about these guitars, you can check out this review and demo. Basically, it's part of the designer series. They're incredibly rare. They sell for crazy money. And uh, yeah, I had my one in the personal collection. I mean, people are offering me 10 grand for it. And I'm like, nah, it, it's not worth it because they're just too darn hard to find. But here we go. I've got two of them in my collection now. I'm not sure if I'll end up keeping the crazy Trem one or not. But as of right now, I definitely need these through Christmas time at least. As I'd like to see these two, you know, at least in one gig together, right? But this one definitely appears to have been played just a bit more than this. I mean, it's got all the similar finish checking stuff going on. But fretboard-wise, you can see this has got a lot of gunk on it I'm going to have to clean off. But other than a one replaced knob, which I think if I remember correctly, they said it's in here. Yeah, it just cracked and fallen off. And okay, I guess the switch tip's in here as well. So well, they'll just need a little bit of a cleanup. But next up here, we've got an interesting story behind this one. So you guys remember that 19, I think it was 92 Les Paul Studio we had documented a couple of weeks back. I think I had just unboxed it on the show and ended up selling it after we took a look at it on that episode. So somebody was uh, wanting to buy it. He was really wanting a case. Let me tell you guys, I've got cases, but I am not the cheapest guy to buy a case from because I view it as, hey, I'm eventually going to need this really nice clean one. I'm not going to sell it unless I'm getting a crazy premium. So I let him know what I had, but then I also said, hey, there's this one on Reverb that's not a bad deal. But he was kind of being wishy-washy on if he was going to do it. So what I did, I just went ahead and bought the case. So I just kind of have a, a 90s era Gibson case now. Missing the top combo lock, probably because somebody got locked out. Yep. And we've got a latch missing down here. We're also missing the case shroud that used to be on this, but I mean, it was such a decent price, you know. Might, might as well have it. But now let's get back into some guitars here. So we'll save this one for last, and let's grab this. I was surfing eBay one day and just happened to come across a fantastic deal on a rare guitar. Now, sadly, I've already reviewed it, so it's more so I either decide I want to keep it this time or I just let it go to someone else. But whenever I see one of these, I have to buy it because there's like a few updates since the last time we talked about it. And oh, nice. This seller uses the Eris system. So inside here, we've got a beautiful, cool, silver Gibson Les Paul case. Can you refresh your memory of what's in this one? 
If you guessed Les Paul Studio Platinum, you'd be incorrect, although they did kind of come in a semi-wet similar case. Which, by the way, what's with all the Platinum showing up lately? There's been like five of them, and none of them has the original case. People always like to steal those. Now, inside here, we've got DJ Ashba. Awesome. Now, this might not be a guitar that fits everyone's aesthetic quota. However, they're so ridiculously rare, but I actually had somebody reach out to DJ to ask him how many they ended up making. And apparently, it's less than 100. Which I'd always figured it was like 250 or less, but he has like eight of them. And then he said the project ended up kind of getting scratched towards the end. But what's really unique about this one, and I'll be honest, it almost scared me off from buying it, is the finish on the neck is so ridiculously thin, you can see the maple <laughs> neck this time. The other example I documented, it was a slightly darker finish. And then somebody has markered on Hun at the back of this one. So if you recognize this guitar and it's yours, uh, let me know, because I bought it on eBay. I can get my money back and reunite it to you if you have a police report. But you can check out this review and demo to learn more. But this one's not in bad shape. Most of the ones that show up are all beat up. So when this one came up at a fantastic price, it's like, yeah, I'm going to pick this thing. Because I also need to issue a correction. I, I was a dumbo the last episode. Your truss rod cover is meant to be backwards on this model for some reason. Normally you get the wings at this end, but that's the way it supposed to read i guess it's definitely an interesting signature model with the black binding everywhere i mean it is a full-on les paul standard despite not looking like it but this one with the maple neck suppose we should uh black light it to make sure everything checks out because that's why i was scared of like the neck was just refinished but it it looks okay at first glance and due to the nature of this just being a satin finish, I mean, you're not ever going to find one that isn't a little buffed up in some areas. I'd say this one's not too half bad. One of my better eBay purchases. We're starting to run out of room over here, but that's all right. The show must go on. Inside this particular one, I think you guys might like seeing this. There's just been so many cool models showing up. And this is uh, another repeat, but one I didn't think I'd probably end up getting again. And it was one of those Les Paul Studios that at first I was like, I don't know if I'm really going to like this or not. But then by the end of the review and demo, I loved it. Let's go ahead and get this thing out. And oh, wow. That's a Costa Rican case for sure. <laughs> Something about the... 2010s era, you can always tell the Costa Rican cases because they're ridiculously heavy. Inside here, sleeps. Oh, that doesn't sound so good. Hopefully it's all right. It's the uh, kind of bucket head influenced, but not at the same time. Gibson Les Paul Studio Hot Rod. So even though its name is Studio, it's actually the full thickness of like a Les Paul standard. So it's got that going for it. It's pinstriped by the Harris guy. And I just always love this whole electric blue flavor of this. Having the double cream pickup stock from the factory really gives it that kind of bucket head like vibe. And then it's one of few Gibsons to not have any fret markers on it at all. So if you dig that, which some guys do, this is one of the few models you can get that on. Another kind of bucket head like feature. But then your headstock, it's just regular Les Paul standard. So imagine a Les Paul standard with pinstriping and no binding. And that's essentially what these are. And that's why they sell for usually a little bit more than a regular studio. But these are so hard to find. I'm glad I was able to pick this up. I mean, it's even got locking tuners, but this one is from 2014. Now, first glance, um, I think after a little bit of cleaning up, this would actually be an all right addition to the collection, maybe. We'll have to see what a quick polish does. I mean, that's my thing, guys. If I'm going to hold on to something for like 20, 30 years, I want it to be the best condition possible because, let's face it, I'm probably not going to play this particular guitar in the whole massive collection all that often. It's just there so I can display it and other people can look at it. And then ideally, in the museum, I'll also have a player's grade stuff or I can have like a, a special package where you know you can come hang out with me for the day and actually play the things behind the glass uh, let's go ahead and verify it yep that's a Costa Rican made case one guitar left to unbox today it's a good one though I've waited a while for this to come back in but inside here sleeps a brand new Les Paul model I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up keeping it or not so if you're interested, you can contact me about it. It shouldn't be too hard to guess what might be in this one. It is the Slash 4 Les Paul. 
So I had a couple of orders for these. In my review and demo piece, I put the decal sticker on it, and it was pretty cool. I still think I would do that if I was going to do it for my own personal collection as well, because it just looks so naked without it. Well, you can check out this review and demo to learn more. But Gibson just recently did a Slash video, which I thought was really cool. It documented some of his collection. And then they're doing like a, a limited edition release, a book of his collection. Now, it seems like they might have more than just the video, but it's not 100% sure. But I like what they're doing there with whole Gibson publishing. But ooh, this one has a pretty stellar top. But I really enjoyed that video, especially when they pulled the snake pit out. But sadly, Bruce Kunkel. Gibson didn't celebrate him enough while they had him. They still didn't know his name. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.